The early stages of ancient Egyptian history and mythology were presumably influenced by the natural surroundings and events affecting ancient Egypt itself. For example, the cyclic pattern of the sun and the seasonal pattern of Nile floods, that enriched the soil, played crucial roles in establishing the water and the sun as symbols of life. The very geographical core of the ancient Egyptian civilization, the fertile Nile Delta, was surrounded by arid lands and deserts, populated by fringe groups of raiders and nomads. Inspired by these factors, the people of ancient Egypt regarded their land as a tranquil haven. Their stable land was fenced by swathes of lawless tribal realms. This essentially created the trichotomy of order, chaos, and renewal. Themes that are integral to the ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses. On the other hand, historical events also played their part in shaping the Egyptian gods and goddesses by the end of the pre-dynastic period, circa 3100 BC. This was the age when Egyptian pharaohs united both the upper and lower realms. This in turn made such kings the focus of adulation in the religious context. Furthermore, the progression of history and mythology is not linear, and as such many of the Egyptian deities evolved, and merged, into other entities and aspects, some of these changes mirrored the preference of the ruling classes of the said period. Every mythology tends to start with primordial origins, and in Egyptian mythology, that scope is covered by the ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses, Nun and Nornet, the feminine form. In essence, the ancient Egyptians perceived Nun as the watery abyss that basically held the universe by which the sphere of life was born. This watery mass had enigmatic characteristics, with its depth embodying both nothingness and infinity. It also served as the source of all aspects of divine and earthly existence. So in many ways, none, like Tiamat, the Mesopotamian primordial goddess of the oceans, was associated, albeit neutrally, with the forces of chaos. Physically, none was often represented as a bearded man with blue or green skin, thus suggesting his connection with the watery mass of the Nile and fertility. Atom, or Atom, with his very name pertaining to the Complete One, was venerated as the creator god of the universe and the ancient Egyptian deities. The powerful host of beings was crafted from his car, flesh, thus signifying the essence of Atom in all parts of the physical realm. According to the Heliopolitan creation myth, Atom was the very first god, essentially the first creator, or self-created one who emerged from the chaotic abyss of none to give form and genders to other gods. Some stories mention how he came out of the primordial egg, or a blue lotus, while other myths suggest that Adam was self-born on the mound that came out from the waters of none. Adam was responsible for birthing Shu, the primordial god of air, and wind, and Tefnut, the primordial goddess of moisture, and rain. These two elemental deities, in turn, gave birth to the sky, Nut, and the earth, Jeb, the gods responsible for creating the powerful deities like Osiris, Isis, and Set. In essence, Adam was venerated as the major creator of the lineage of gods. He was depicted as a man who wore the jewel white and red crowns of both Lower and Upper Egypt. Eiza Set, or Sausus in Greek, an early mother goddess referred to as grandmother of gods was also perceived as the feminine counterpart to Adam. Interesting fact about Adam, it should be noted that on occasions, Adam was also visualized as an aged man associated with the setting sun, thus making him a sun god who regenerated during the night, and emerged as Capri during dawn and Ra during the afternoon. Amun was the divine entity that represented the air and the sun, and was often considered one of the most important ancient Egyptian gods. Sometimes portrayed as the king of Egyptian gods and goddesses, Amun was also the patron deity of Thebes, the royal capital during the impressive New Kingdom era of Egypt, circa 16th century BC to 11th century BC. In fact, in the earlier centuries, Amun was a minor god, and as such played second fiddle to war gods like Monchu. However, the New Kingdom period saw the rise of the deity, who was venerated as the self-created one, like Adam, 
Ra, the sun god, when the sun was at its peak, on the other hand, was considered among the most powerful ancient Egyptian deities. He was associated with the pharaoh, so much so, that by 5th dynasty, almost every ruler was symbolically hailed as the son of Ra. The sun god was also associated with the earlier supreme god Atom of Heliopolis. And over time, especially during the New Kingdom, the thriving Amun cult merged the two entities Amun and Ra into a composite god known as Amun Ra. This composite sun god was hailed as the Lord of Truth, Father of the Gods, Maker of Men, Creator of all animals, Lord of things that are, Creator of the Staff of Life. According to many scholars, Amun Ra symbolized the combination of the invisible force, of wind, with the visible majesty, of the life-giving sun. This establishes an all-encompassing deity that covered most aspects of creation. Interesting fact about Ra, Ra was also perceived as the force of light and order that battles chaos, signified by the monstrous serpent god Apep, or Apopias, every day, for the sun to rise. Thus Ra emerging victorious from his daily scuffle with the serpent deity was mirrored by the Egyptian belief in light's victory over darkness. Mut, also called Mot, was often regarded as the wife and consort of Amun during the Middle Kingdom phase of ancient Egypt. She was venerated as the ancient mother goddess of Thebes, or was set, pertaining to present-day Luxor. Interestingly enough, the deity replaced Amornet, the earlier consort of Amun during the aforementioned Ogdoad or Eight Gods system. The shift suggests the rise of a new triad of Egyptian gods who were worshipped in the temple of Amun at Ipit Reset, Luxor. This triad consisted of Amun, Mut, and their adopted son Khonsu, the moon god, discussed in the next entry. Consequently, when Amun was merged with Ra, Mut was referred to as the Eye of the Ra, an honorific title held by many successive major Egyptian goddesses. The very name Mut was associated with Mother while MWT also referred to vultures. To that end, it is probable that the ancient Egyptians perceived vultures as nurturing creatures, which alludes to their motherly nature. In that regard, Mut, as the queen of gods, was depicted as a woman with wings wearing a crown or royal headdress, or sometimes a vulture headdress. She was also represented as a vulture in various hieroglyphs. Interestingly, the mother goddess Mut worshipped at the temple of Amun, was extolled with the epithet, Mut, who giveth birth, but was herself not born of any. Khonsu was regarded as the adopted son of Amun and Mut, and their triad gained prominence at Thebes, the capital of Egypt during various ages. He was also worshipped as the Egyptian god of the moon, and also time and even healing. Quite intriguingly, while Khonsu was venerated as the amiable scion of Amun during the New Kingdom era, his origins rather alluded to the darker side of affairs during the earlier periods. To that end, in the Old Kingdom era, Khonsu was described as a bloodthirsty deity, as mentioned in the pyramid texts, and Khonsu who lives on hearts, with one mythical narrative suggesting how he, helped by dead kings, feasted on the hearts of other gods, reverting to his more genial persona. As perceived during the New Kingdom, Khonsu was depicted as a young man, mostly in a mummy pose, with a sidelock, or braid, and a curved beard, features that hinted at both his youthful and godly nature. The very name Khonsu was possibly derived from the word Keens, which means to cross, alluding to his journey across the sky, thus suggesting his association with the moon. To that end, Khonsu embodied the crescent moon's light and was further represented as an imposing bull during the full moon. Khonsu, the protector, was possibly also venerated as a deity of love, fertility, menstrual cycles, and lifespans. Interesting fact about Khonsu, although related to popular culture, the Moon Knight, the eponymous character from the Marvel comics and TV series Moon Knight, was devised as the avatar or champion of Khonsu.